So we have the Israel situation today, which I did not plan on revisiting. I am revisiting it partly because I just want to get I want to get it off my chest uh, to clear clear my head of it because it has been preying on me a little bit. But obviously, me not being any sort of expert in any of the the fields that are going on in Israel, I didn't really want to sit here and give you a lecture on who's right and who's wrong and who I think should support and not. Because I I don't feel I've got a tenth of the historical knowledge to go through that. So I did two videos on this subject. Uh, both of them were terrible. And this is my third and final attempt. And the conclusions I've reached are I have reached no conclusions. I categorically refuse to think that all Israelis are genocidal maniacs. I don't think all Palestinians are Hamas-supporting terrorists uh, bent on the destruction of all Zionism or Judaism or whatever you want to call it. I think early in October there was a, a dreadful attack, a public attack, which made a lot of people very angry and now both sides are reaping the rewards of that anger. So I would at least press people not to perhaps not be angry but don't act in anger. That would be my best advice if I was to give any. I mean, firstly, I don't think any of these points are mutually exclusive. You don't have to you can support Israelis, note I don't say Israel, but Israelis. You can support Israelis and support Palestinians at the same time. They're all people. I believe as many of them feel the same way. You can support Israelis and be sceptical of Benjamin Netanyahu. I hope I pronounced his name properly. You can do that. You can't... You can want the best for Palestinians, but acknowledge that an armed response was completely inevitable. The only thing Israel could do, and it was planned by Hamas. They knew what was going to happen. I believe they did anyway. There's a, there's a bloke called Peter Zion. I'll try and put a, a link to the video that I saw this on when I was looking into this conflict, but... It does more or less explain the, um, I should explain Peter Zion for those of you who haven't heard of him, and I would imagine most of you have, because I, I think he's slightly more famous than me, is a geopolitical expert, which I believe means he looks into how geography, or the location of where you are in the world, affects your politics. And he did quite a good 20-odd uh, minute video on the geopolitics, politics of the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, the West Bank, Iran, the UAE. So that's that's a good, good place to go for an impartial an impartial information on that. I've oft, I've also been impressed by the rest of politics, that podcast that's looked into this somewhat. And they have been very impartial of getting representatives from both sides of this conflict, um, the Palestinian side and the Israeli side, to talk about it. And uh, after that, everybody has had intelligent points, but somewhat one-sided. And I don't... One of the things that gave me a lot of pause was when I looked at for information on this is I got a lot of Israeli... Israeli information. I got a lot of information from, I hate to say right-wing politicians. It's, every time somebody says like right-leaning or right-wing, they just hear the word right and they think I've been listening to bloody Hitler's grandson, you know. It's it's not like that, but there, there certainly is a bent on the political right at the minute to support Israel, or from what I can understand. Jordan Peterson completely supports Israel's actions, I, I believe. Uh, I have to I have to clarify that. I didn't watch much from Jordan Peterson. He, I was a couple of, couple of minutes of a video before I had to run out. I know Duncan Murray supports Israel's actions. Uh, now, 
oh, as I have a great deal of respect for these two men and neither of them are intellectual slouches by any stretch of the imagination. I don't I don't like to go to one particular source for my information, so I was a little aware that I'd perhaps drank predominantly from the same well, we'll say, so that worried me a little bit. I did find somebody Russell Brand was interviewing two years ago. Um, his name escapes me. He was the only video where I found out that Israel has been far from innocent in this conflict. Uh, in the 80s, he was mentioning um, a great deal of uh, harm that uh, is Israel did to Palestinians. They had... Apparently, it was something to do with they actually formed Hamas as a a counter a counter to the end uh, the Palestinian Liber Liberation Army, and obviously it's blown up in their face. But there was free elections, uh, something to do with a political coup arranged by Israel because Hamas got into power, and as you can tell, I watched one video on it. And I didn't really remember it, but that was. That was the most account that all the other videos that I watched. There was there was a few historical videos that I watched as well, but again, they were made by Israelis, so they were very favourable towards the Israelis, and I I don't like that too much either. It's it's difficult. So this is running on a little bit longer than I hoped. What I want to say is, again. Like I said at the beginning, you can support all of the civilians in this, Israeli or Palestinian. There's there's a lot of good people on the ground. Get high up, just like everywhere else, the shit rises to the top. I I wouldn't blame anybody for not having a great deal of faith in Netanyahu's uh, motives at the minute. I certainly think that he's at least considering his political future. And I... I I mean, I don't know the man, but that's the impression I get from what I've been told. Obviously, anybody who thinks that coming out of coming out of anywhere through a fence with dozens or hundreds of people and shooting down people at a music festival is justified, you need you need to, you need to look at yourself. You really do. You're a fucking idiot if you think that. That's not justified. The more grey area is is what is 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 what Israel doing now justified, and that is a very grey area, and it's that is of course what's given me the most pause and the the most angst if you want, because yes, I mean if we believe all the reports, and I don't think we should believe all of them, but we could believe some of them that Israel has bombed hospitals, bombed schools, have bombed all of these places. Places that you could say are very handy to hide uh, munitions, um, ID, IADs, ADs, I suppose, you know, like just bombs, missiles, lots of missiles happen at the minute. Hamas is, I think Hamas is perfectly well capable of sticking them in the cellar of a hospital and saying, win-win, they either don't bomb the hospital and we've got a load of missiles we can shoot at them tomorrow, or they bomb the hospital and we're, we're dragged them through the shit in the press. And then Israel, Israeli forces on the ground have the, and in the air, have the unenviable decision of, do we leave these, X missiles, fighters, whatever, there, and not bomb a hospital, which probably sounds great to a lot of people, but you've got to remember that whatever they're not bombing there, which isn't a hospital, obviously, the other thing they're not bombing or going in and fighting, their houses are two hours drive down the road. There, you know, these, these, these things can reach Jerusalem, these missiles, I would imagine. It, Israel is not a big country. Like I said, I drove across it. It's not a big place. These, 
if, if you're leaving them there, that there's every chance they're going to be used on somebody you love the next day, the later that day, later that week. And I don't really know what you're meant to do with that end point. I don't know what to do. I, I wouldn't, I don't want to beat my chest and say, well, you're going, they've had a chance. But there's people saying, you know, the Israelis will say, evacuate that hospital. You've got, you know, you've got an hour. And like, well, there's some, literally some poor lassie giving birth. As they're saying, there's somebody strapped to a life support machine. What are you meant to do? Because I know a lot of Israelis, you know, are facing that choice. And they know, like, they have families, again, within two hours drive. They've had family who were at that music festival, perhaps, and they're, they're full of hate and revenge. There's, it's, it's a, it's an impossible, it's it's a necessary question and an impossible answer, to me at least. So please consider all of that before we start, you know, calling people genocidal maniacs. It's. That's all I've been able to do. And now hopefully um, I can put this a little bit out of my mind and maybe somebody's had something to think about through this video. I certainly hope so. I, uh, I, think, it's, I think it's naive to think this is going to get sorted out anytime soon. But, well... I will make one more final point is that we're talking like 1,400 people. Now, I can't remember the exact figure of people who were killed in the Twin Towers. But you have to remember that because of that action, America and the UN, Britain certainly went with them, felt completely within their rights to invade Afghanistan. And... I don't know if Iraq was around the same time we're talking 20 years ago, but that got a great deal of support. And America doesn't live right next to Afghanistan. And then we got a great deal of support for the yeah, way there for killing Osama bin Laden. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I think that's an interesting an interesting comparison to make. Again, though, all we can say is, I could, we can only hope that is really soldiers are doing their best to minimise um, collateral damage in civilian targets, uh, as impossible as that sounds. And I think I've pontificated enough. Um, I'll put this video up now. Um, let's hope for something happier tomorrow.